we now have a ton of gameplay footage and reactions from those lucky enough to get some time with Street Fighter VI's early build. Both those from within and without the FGC seem excited and satisfied with what they've experienced thus far. This leads us to question, has Capcom perhaps found that perfect balance between accessibility and nuanced, dynamic core gameplay? All on this week's episode of Talkin' Block. When I was a kid, there was this uh, candy called the Wonder Ball, the Nestle Wonder Ball. Are you familiar with that? Do you remember the commercials for it? I don't know if it's still a thing or not, but it worked. The marketing worked on me. I remember feeling hype about this thing. Uh, long story short, it had a bunch of layers of, of like um, exploration. There was the box and it had some kind of like, you know, collectible thing on the back. So you'd collect the boxes and then there was like colored foil. You'd peel that away and there's like Nestle chocolate shell. And that was delicious. And that was part of the reason you would buy a Wonder Ball. But you wouldn't stop there. You'd eat the chocolate and then in the core of it all was like kind of the main thing that you were going for. And that would have either like little prizes, like collectible Disney characters or, uh, you know, like other chocolates or something like that on the inside. Point was the way they did the Wonder Ball I was in for every layer of that, right? I didn't get to the chocolate and go, this is the best part, and then throw the rest away. If they had done it that way, they didn't do it right, you know? And so when I think about the way fighting games are and the way Street Fighter VI is presented to people, it is drawing people's attention very effectively. And they are coming in not knowing the first thing about fighting games and still feeling completely satisfied as we're going to go over some reactions to the different, like, you know, kind of types of people that have expressed themselves um, having been able to play this and at the same time there is uh you know people like you and i who, who are a little more seasoned in the fighting game you know world and we sort of know what to look for we're looking at things and going uh yeah but there's definitely balance we talked in, a, in our previous segment about drive impact and how that's going to be so appealing to new players because it's got so much obvious utility and it looks really fun to do and you land a drive impact and it's, the paint goes everywhere and you feel like you have this control and this ability and uh you, you're able to manifest what you want to see on the screen on the screen and it's like i've never played street fighter before and i was able to do this and it made me want to play more and so you're going to see people that people bleed that paint man that's uh, that's <laughs> remember those gatorade bleed that paint all over yeah everyone's going to be doing that and their mother right but then as as more experienced fighting game player you go oh yeah but then there are so many answers to that immediately and i bet you doing those answers or learning how to instead of just you know drive parry or drive impacting back to perfectly parry and then land a combo afterwards is probably even more satisfying so the point there with that example is a newcomer can come in do what they want to do and feel uh, um, satisfied by it but they're also not stepping on it's not like drive impact is so good that it, that's what the whole game is about right and that if you can land a drive impact you're gonna win the round and so it just devolves into doing that it's like no th there's that but you can continue to to delve deeper into it and you're probably motivated to because it's fun to begin with and have even more fun get to the core of that you know and, and and so you appreciate the outer layer chocolate but it's not where you stop it just motivates you to continue on into the core and if capcom has found that balance at this very early stage if they found that uh that's going to be huge because not only will you grow your fan base but you'll also keep the people that like you know are, are more committed and such and and i'm sorry that are that have been doing it for longer and uh you know want that more traditional experience it's like they're appealing to both sides but is, is that what you're seeing too or do you have a different perspective at this point no it's um uh, the, the biggest thing nakiyama talked about it he said that that the game needs to be fun uh he said that the first and foremost that they're making the game very fun but they also want it in a balanced way where it's not you know fun because you're you're doing super explosive stuff and can compete with you know the justin wongs and daigos out there uh if you've never put practice or time in and Stuff, that that's not the messaging it's let's make it fun first and then let's balance around that and, and very much a, a sakurai you know a smash brothers kind of quote there mm -hmm. uh but again that's good game development a uh, harada said the same thing you know mm -hmm. all the great fighting game developers say they, that is how you make a great game you make it fun first you get the balance in there afterwards so a lot of us uh that sort of are, are from the more traditional fgc are are seeing a lot of things that we like right the balance of the drive system that that there's this there's this obviously strong thing but then here's the counter and then my mind immediately is like okay so how is that going to play out and, and i start to strategize and that's interesting in and of itself but i wanted to grab a couple of reactions from people that got to play the game that are not seasoned fighting game players not 
directly out of the FGC. Um, so there is Jess Condit, who is a writer for Engadget, and she says this, uh, thank you, Street Fighter VI. For the first time in my life, I wasn't embarrassed to play a fighting game in front of strangers on the show floor of a video game convention, and it was all because of the updated control sc scheme in Street Fighter VI. She's referencing, of course, the, the modern controls, where everything is sort of uh, uh, very much simplified, but much easier to do. She says, Chun-Li is my favorite Street Fighter character, which usually doesn't end well for her. And in six, with the modern control type, she feels faster and more powerful than ever. I ended up using her Tensho kicks move often, charging toward my opponents and pressing triangle to lift them up with a series of spinning feet to the face, but all of her specials came easily and hit hard. The fact that, th that this person who is just kind of more general in the gaming uh, realm, or in the fighting game realm, I should say, remembers the specifics of like, I was doing this. And then I remember I went and I pressed triangle and it did this and it felt good. And also everything felt like I could do it. I had a sense of control early on, which to me says they are brilliantly checking that box of that barrier of I get into fighting games and I can't throw a Hadouken and my opponent just beats the crap out of me and it's over and I'm demoralized and I want to walk away from it. We're hearing, it's almost, it's almost like she wrote this perfectly to... <laughs> to say what we want to hear right is like a newcomer is able to get in and have fun immediately she says the modern controls helped me slow down and appreciate each move it made it easier to connect my inputs with the actions on screen and i feel like i understand street fighter a little better now i might even yes. try out the classic control type when i pick up street fighter 6 in my living room not on the show floor yeah. it's like that's what you want to hear exactly, right yeah yeah it's simplified controls that, um, when they're done correctly, and we've seen numerous examples of them being done really well. Uh, I think it's Grand Blue or whatever has uh, the simplified controls, and they have like a cooldown thing on it, um, where you can only do it. Like I'm, I'm trying to remember all the games, but I, I know like uh, David Serlin's like Fantasy Strike. Like mm. that's all simplified controls, and there's just cooldown meters and stuff. There's a bunch of ways of doing simplified controls without interfering with like you know the 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 top level players. Exactly. I'm really happy to see that implemented in this way. And especially again, in this example, you want people to be able to fundamentally understand what's going on in fighting games, even if they have no intention of ever, you know, trying to take on Daigo or enter a tournament or whatever, that's that's perfectly fine. You want them to be able to understand and appreciate it and have, most, most importantly, have fun with it. Have fun with the game uh, and enjoy themselves without having the, this extremely high barrier for injury. Right, and and none of us that kind of know our way around a Street Fighter game already are going like, oh, simplified controls, that looks like it's going to be the optimal way of playing because you're getting rid of a ton of the nuance and a ton of the options that you, know, like, you only have like three attack buttons and the game decides whether yeah. they're punches and kicks and stuff and we're going, oh, okay, that's fine. That can be there for the newcomers and that's not at all going to step on what I want to do. And if they're having fun over there doing that, great and maybe like yep. she says here you can evolve into the classic style once you get some momentum with that that is exactly the function you want from something like that so the simplified controls doing a lot for things uh doing a lot for this game and bringing in new people but also uh the 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 satisfaction of this the general flow of the game so another person that was at uh summer game fest and uh, goes by the name skill up had like 150k followers on uh, on twitter um and was invited he says fgc let me tell you i don't know about fighting games but i will tell you that this felt extremely smooth to play characters felt weighty without feeling sluggish and it looks awesome and uh, i'll put up here also some footage from vincenzo latera of multiplayer.it i think he was f uh, filming somebody else playing and someone that looks like they don't necessarily know um, a ton about street fighter but you can hear in the reactions there this person says like it was so satisfying immediately like this is fun to play <laughs> Yo, this toy feel amazing. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Let's go. Yo, this game feels crazy responsive. Crazy responsive, yo. This is fire the two second impression you know the elevator pitch this game gets for someone it's like it's capturing people right off the bat even if they're not super familiar with the series something about the looks too is um this is running on ps5 dev kits all the footage that you know the new footage we've seen and ps5 dev kits are not capable of running uh full 4k resolution as far as i'm i'm aware of um so the game is going to look even better when people get it on pcs and are running it on like you know 3000 or 4000 series and video cards are you know amd equivalents uh, and running at, at a full 4k you know, like, because, you know, PS5, it can do, like, checkerboard 4K, but it can't do, like, the full-on, like, hey, you know, um, it just doesn't have enough horsepower. So the game's actually going to look even better, like, with some time.
and it, it, it's like yeah it's um the full 4k resolution is pretty darn nice to run at so. and and just walking by what we've seen this game looks really good from from the color schemes and the animations the movements i i haven't landed a like a drive impact for instance but i can already tell you that looks fun that looks satisfying i'm excited to do that so if you're walking by and this is in an arcade there's a reason for you to turn your head and, and to go and put a quarter in or like ten dollars or however much it is to play an arcade game these days sam uh Makovic, from Ars Technica also had a response. He wrote an entire article. We'll link that up in the uh, in the description here. But he says, after spending two days smacking strangers around in the world's first playable version of Street Fighter VI, I'm convinced that this is the entry that will bring me, a casual fighting game player, back to the series. But the most crucial stuff, the delirious fun that made me want to cancel all of my other appointments at an in-person summer game fest event and play more Street Fighter VI, already feels locked in and again like i think he's referring to the fact that well it's super early but the core stuff and probably like the drive system and whatnot is for the most part where they kind of want it maybe little tweaks here and there of like how much meter is granted or taken away things along those lines but the the core of the game feels already very satisfying to people and and it's doing what it needs to do now here on the more uh, traditional FGC side of things, we've had a lot of input from Max uh, Maximilian, who's gotten a bunch of time with the game and, and then reported on his findings and shown a bunch of gameplay. And he said something along the lines of it took him about 15 minutes or so to really kind of get like captured by the game. But once he got through that barrier, uh, it was a ton of fun and he had a lot of positives to say about it. I just want to know what you think about it. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to be here for six hours because I'm not just gonna get some basic impressions. If I left after that first 15 minutes, my impressions would have been all bad, right? Uh, it was a pretty game, but I don't know, man. But I stuck it around and I was like, I'm gonna figure this stuff out, figure out like exactly how it works. And I, it started warming up to me a lot, so. But um, let me ask you, how, how are you feeling as you know someone that's been around fighting games for a long time, what you've seen so far, how encouraged, exciting are you feeling versus is there anything that's popping up that you're going, eh, that gives me a little pause, gives me a little hesitation. I'm wary of, you know, whatever. It's it's a vanilla release of a game. It's not going to be super well balanced or, or super well thought of in hindsight. Uh, so I'm well, I'm hyped to you know experience it and see, have some fun with it. I'm also not like I'm not thinking we're going to see like the pinnacle of play or whatever in year one or anything like that. I'm I'm more of like I just want to enjoy the game and have fun with it. I am going to go and play a bunch, all the single player modes and go through all that kind of stuff. I enjoy doing that with basically every Street Fighter game. I played through every Street Fighter game single player wise uh, that's ever been released. I, that's just something I do. So th that stuff really int is interesting and draws me in. Um, but I'm I'm just with the history of this franchise and, and every fighting game pretty much ever released um, that first year is very rough from a competitive standpoint so I'm not super hype about that uh, I am hype about actually being able to play you though uh, because it, since the net code is going to be better um, and, and you and I have pretty darn good I've got a fiber connection you've got a gigabit connection and we're in California Arizona we can't play each other it's it, it's the, the net code in Street Fighter 5 is so bad it's a few states away and we can't play each other reliably and it's just it's like that is so pathetic uh, and so that's the stuff I'm really hyped about with, with Street Fighter 6 um, um, but I, I'm also not like thinking, I mean, again, uh, competitive balance is going to be like, yeah. Well, oof, and, and I think that that's a given that, and the, the community is going to have a certain amount of buffer for that, like a certain amount of acceptance for that. Like, of course, it's going to have issues like uh, now. Now, maybe if like an obvious infinite pops up in the beginning, you go, OK, you should have. You should have been able to deal with that because we're going to have other things that, that creep up. So it's more of like if, if old issues creep up at the start, that's an issue. But if, you know, new stuff, it's it's the vanilla version of a game. There's going to be some, some you know, patience for that kind of a thing. And I think Capcom will continue, to, obviously, to develop and, and balance further. But will it be fun on release? It's already, it's like, you know, there's an answer to a lot of the stuff we're seeing. The drive system goes deep, but you don't have to master it to start having fun. You know, it's it's, you know, fun and intuitive from the start, but more time invested means more reward. So uh, those kinds of things look like what the Street Fighter six experience is offering us right now. And I'm I'm excited to jump into it. I don't expect it to be perfect. But I also want to ask you guys, uh, what do you think the Street Fighter six experience is looking like so far? Is it just perfect? Are they are they checking every box that they can right now? Or is there anything that you're kind of worried about that you see this thing go down and you're like, oh, that's going to be a problem. Like for me, for instance, I think that maybe the fact that level three supers uh, deal, uh, they, they take away from the opponent's drive meter while giving you drive meter, that might be a little overpowered. And it, it, you know, you have to see it in the context of everything else. But right now that's raising a little bit of a red flag for me. So uh, you guys, do you have any red flags that have popped up thus far? Do you think 
think it's the perfect game and it's going to be the uh you know the the, the second coming for street fighter uh let us know in the comments below uh but yeah so far a lot of positive momentum it, it boding well at this early stage and uh i'm i'm optimistically cautiously hype